in Kansas City Public Schools, what we're doing is we're really trying to transform the way we do um, discipline in our school district and really create a culture of caring. We are looking at equity audits to kind of identify um, our data to kind of see where um, our gaps are and where we're seeing um, the students are being disenfranchised from our educational system. So a part of this process of digging deep and really pulling back the onion to kind of identify and look at the work, one of our schools, one of our signature schools, actually, when we pulled back the onion, we identified that they were suspending more girls of color than they were any other um, any other demographics. So I'm so excited <laughs> to have an opportunity to really engage in conversation um, with you about this work. So um, first question that I have is, what was the catalyst for, um, for you to begin this work uh, related to uh, Push Out? I have always held a space for girls in this conversation about school to confinement pathways and around some of the unique challenges that they experience um, in our nation's schools. I was once a black girl <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm the mother of two black girls. And, and I think that in much of our public discourses about what our schools need to be and the type of institutions that we are trying to build, we started to focus in on the boys. I just was always one to say that we had to recognize that many of the conditions that were impacting the well being of boys also impacted the well being of girls, but we weren't seeing them because we weren't asking the questions about them. We weren't engaging them in the discourses. And we certainly hadn't built out rubric for measuring uh, their well being um, and assessing their well being in our, in our schools. Around 2010, we started to see data that was showing that Black girls were disproportionately experiencing exclusionary discipline. And yet, in almost every public uh, conversation about what was happening in our nation's schools, people would routinely dismiss girls and say, oh, the girls are fine. We have to focus on the boys. The girls are fine. Uh, and there was a small group of us who were looking at the data and arguing, actually, the girls are not fine. <laughs> and so we need to, number one, shift our narrative, but also shift our understanding for how we're capturing data such that we can see our girls. In your TED Talk, you mentioned education is freedom work. So yeah. can you kind of <laughs> speak to that? When I started doing this work around push out, it was clear to me that uh, so many of our school districts across the country were finding creative ways to keep children out of school, creative <laughs> ways to suspend issues, you know, ways for us to take them in, in school suspension versus out of school suspension, step out of the classroom for a moment. But either way, they were losing instruction time and they were not really being engaged in the learning process. And what we found from the body of research that's been looking at the impact of all of these actions is that obviously a loss of instruction time, a removal from school, a placement in juvenile detention or contact with the juvenile court system. These are all ways that we are exacerbating uh, the, car the, the impact of the carceral system, right? Yeah. That we are deepening not just their uh, criminalization, but also priming them for futures that um, are not free that are stagnant, that are harmful. And so what we know from the body of research with girls is that education is a critical protective factor against contact with the juvenile court or criminal legal system. 